Hi students, let me show you the 8 to 1 multiplexer. So this time we have 8 data inputs coming in over here and 1 data output. Now um, for the 4 to 1 and the 2 to 1 multiplexers, um, for the 2 to 1 we had 1 select line coming in here. For the 4 to 1 we had 2. This time we're going to need 3 input select lines. So I'll label these S0, S1, S2. And um, the way to figure out if you, um, in your class, if you um, need to design a 16 to 1 multiplexer or a 32 to 1 multiplexer or something like that, um, however many bits you need to count up to the number of inputs you have is going to tell you how many select lines you need. So what I mean by that is for the 4 to 1 multiplexer, um, we need to count, be able to count up to 4. So 2 to the 2 is equal to 4, so that means we need 2 select lines. For the 2 to 1 multiplexer, we need to count up to 2, so 2 to the 1 is equal to 2, so that means we need 1 select line. For this 8 to 1 multiplexer, we need to be able to count up to 8, so 2 to the 3rd is equal to 8, so that means we need 3 select lines. Um, so I just wanted to explain to you how we figure out how many select lines are needed down here. And it's basically, we have to be able to distinguish between eight different cases here. So if we need to count between eight distinct numbers, we're going to need three bits for that. Okay, great. So um, if this is our 8 to 1 multiplexer, um, we, we're going to have a lot of don't cares, just like with the other multiplexers, because um, at every, every case of this is only going to select one data line and pipe it to the output. So whatever's coming in to all these other inputs, we don't care about them. So on our truth table, we're going to have lots of nice X's. Um, so let me show you what that truth table looks like. This is again going to be an abbreviated truth table where I'm only going to put the cases where the output is equal to 1. Um, and I'll explain how that works. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H are my data inputs. My select inputs are S2, S1, S0. And here's my output. So if I kind of separate these columns, um, the first case is I want to start with 0. And for 0, I want to take whatever is coming in on A and pipe it to the output. So I'm going to grab this A line and I'm going it, to route it to the output if I have zeros coming in on all these select lines. So uh, my output's going to be 1 if what comes on, in on A is 1. If what comes in on A is 0, I'm going to get an output of 0. So I'll just make the abbreviated truth table because um, these cases would be the same between those two rows. But the important part here is that um, in this case, we have all don't cares on the other inputs because A is the only one that we care about that's getting um, picked up and pushed to the output. Okay, great. So then the next case, 0, 0, 1, is going to um, grab B and pipe it to the output. 0, 1, 0 is going to grab C and put it to the output. 0, 1, 1 is going to grab D and put it to the output. 1, 0, 0 collects E and so on. So the rest of these, you could fill these in, are all going to be don't cares. And um, if you wanted to take the time to do that, you're just going to have basically a diagonal um, line of 1s that go all the way from A to H because this is the one that is going to get selected and the rest of them are X's because we don't care. Okay, so then if we wanted to write the function for our output, um, we can do that in sum of products or products of some form. I will show you how to do the sum of product form. So the function so this is a logical function that implements the 8 to 1 multiplexer is, um, well, for this first case, this is going to be A is 1, and then we want to end it with S2, S1, S0 all being zeros. So it looks like this. We have A not complemented because it's a 1, and then we have S2, S1, S0, and these all get complements because these need to all be zero in order for this product term to be one. Okay, great. So that's the first product term. The second product term, 
we're going to grab B if S2, S1, S0, where S2 and S1 are the ones that are complemented because S0 has a 1 on it. Okay, great. And then the next product term, we're going to grab C and pipe it to the output if on S2, S1, and S0, we have 0, 1, 0. So complement, not complemented, complemented. So this will continue in this fashion. You're going to have eight product terms all ORed together. And just like we did with the 4 to 1 multiplexer, you can make the digital logic circuit for this that um, implements the 8 to 1 multiplexer by basically anding all of these product terms together and then putting all the output of those ands into a big 8 input OR gate. So let me know if you have questions about the 8 to 1 multiplexer. On the next video I'm going to show you is how we actually use these multiplexers to um, implement other functions.